The array map function in JavaScript transforms an array using a function. What you might not know, though, is that this transformation function is also passed some additional information, including the index of the value being transformed and the original array. Let's take a look at how you can use this. So here I've declared an array, and then you can see the basic behavior of array map. So we're just calling dot map on that array, and then we're passing in a function that is going to be called for every value in that original array. This function here is taking the original value of the array, and in this case, it's just going and doubling it. So you can see that our resulting array has all of the original string values duplicated. So that's the basic usage of array map, but our transformation function is also passed some additional information that we can make use of. So if we go back here and we go to our transformation function, the first value that we're taking in is the original value from the array. The second value though is going to be the index in the current array. So if I go and add a second argument to our arrow function here, I can now use the index in our transform. So let's just say x plus i. And when I run this, you'll notice that we get back an array which each value combined with its index and they're being converted to strings in this case. So we have a at index zero, b at index one, and then c at index two. Again, all we had to do is add that i argument here and array map is automatically going to pass in the index of the value being transformed into our transformation function. You can use this index value however you'd like. So if you want to, you can actually include the index in the resulting objects that are going to be returned from the transform function. So we could do something here, just modifying our function. For each value in the array, we're going to return a new array, sort of acting like a little tuple here that contains both the index and then the original value from the array. We get back an array with three values, and then each value in that array is that tuple or a new array that contains both the index and then the original value. So that is the first two arguments to the array map transform function, but there's also a third argument that you might occasionally find useful as well, and that is going to be the original array that is being transformed. So if we go back here, let's go and modify our transform function to now take a third argument, which we'll just call a in this case. Now a is going to be the original array that is passed in. So in this case, it is just the value of our array that we've created over here. And you can then use that inside of your transform function. Now the important thing about this is that when you're using a here, it is referring to the original um, array value. So if we did something like, let's just go and ignore the other two arguments, and we're just going to call array map and only return the value for a in this case, so only of that third argument. You can see that we get back an array of three values, because again, it's calling uh, the transform function on each value in our original array. And if we expand this array, you notice that each of these values is just the original array, so a, b, c. Again, the thing to note here is that this transform value, which is a here, is the original array value. It is not the transformed array value. We are getting passed in the original array value, and then we can use that inside of our transform function. And that is what that third argument here is representing. Now, this third argument to the transform function is probably not something you'll be using all the time, but it can be used in kind of creative ways. So for example here, let's say that we wanted to go and reverse our array. So we could do that just by going and let's go back to our transform function here. And we're going to use both the index that's passed in and then the original array value that's passed in as well. And we're going to call the app function on that original array, which is going to be similar to array indexing, but it also supports negative um, indexes. So you can pass in a negative value to index from the back of the array. Now we can do something like negative i minus one. And this is going to go and start indexing from the back of the array using the original index that is passed in in our array. And you can see that we get back a new array that has all of the values reversed. And again, we're just able to reference the values that are actually passed in here to array map. I know this code is a little bit complicated, um, and it's combining a few different concepts, but it's just showing how you can use all the values passed in here to perform some kind of interesting things in a pretty concise piece of code. So that's a look at the additional arguments passed into array maps transform function. They can be pretty convenient and also save you from having to do things like trying to calculate the index yourself.